Hey guys, before we kick off this video, the first thing I'm going to say is if you want to see how I designed this part, go ahead and go check out the CAD for CAM series on how to actually create this model and get all your settings and your dimensions put in. And outside of that, if you guys like content like this, feel free to hit that like button and subscribe to get the latest updates on all of our videos. So let's go ahead and jump into this. So I'm going to go ahead and switch from the design to the manufacturer workspace. And I'm going to start by creating my first setup. So let's go to the milling tab, hit setup. And I am going to set my X, Y, Z position. So I'm going to go Z axis up. And as you see right now, we're currently on center of our stock. And our stock is actually the size of our part. So let's adjust that stock. And we're going to round that up by zero. That way we can work right off the top of it. And then the width of it is from flat to flat. And again, we're just cutting out this pocket. We're not doing anything like facing off the top or anything crazy. I am going to use a setup point and you guys could use whatever location that you like, but I do like the idea of using the center of the front here. And that would be my reference point if there was say, a dowel pin or something down here to actually pick up off of to pick center in my X of that pin. And then, you know, center of the actual where the pocket's going to be placed on my part. So from here, we're going to go ahead and hit OK. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to first start by roughing out this pocket. I do know these corners, if I measure them or if you did catch the design side, these are half inch radiuses in these corners. Your radius might be smaller or bigger. Also, keep in mind, depending on the machine you're using and how much torque you have, there is a big difference on what you're capable of doing on that actual machine. So I'm actually going to start this off with a 2D pocket. And I'm just going to go straight for a quarter inch end mill as if I was maybe using like a bridge port or something very, very simple that doesn't have a ton of torque behind it. Now, I do need to define where my geometry is to cut this pocket. So I'm going to go ahead and pick the floor. And then one other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the step. So I am picking the actual bottom surface that I want to machine to. But as you're seeing, or if you've ever caught my other videos, we actually have a closed pocket and an open pocket here to be able to machine this out with. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my stock contours if you guys wanted to just to retain that in. Again, because of stock, as you guys are seeing, is it's thinking this pocket is much bigger than it should be. So we're actually not going to use stock contours in this case. Or we could turn on stock contours and pick our upper edge. It's not a big deal. We're just adding too many things to this to make it complex. The key element here is we gave it its pockets. We gave it its tool. Let's go ahead and hit OK and see what we get right out the start. As you can see here, we are automatically helicing down and then cutting out this profile. My stock isn't updating because we didn't turn on multiple depths yet. So let's go ahead and go back and turn on multiple depths. So I am going to go in here. We're going to go to our passes tab, kick on multiple depths. And let's say I am going to do 050 step downs. And as you're going to see now, we're making all those step downs. And my stock has updated to reflect that we are machining down a nice clean profile and path. Again, the method here with the pocket clearing tool path is we're using the full width of the tool, but we're making shallow step downs. Now, if we wanted to approach this a little differently, let's say we want to do adaptive clearing, our selection is still going to be very similar. Again, we're going to pick the floor. We're going to pick that open pocket. I'm going to go to my passes tab. You're going to notice that we're actually only using a little bit of the side of the tool, but we're going to take a much deeper cut with this. So I'm going to actually bump my step down up to like 0.25. And again, we're going to go ahead and hit OK. And as you're going to notice, we are going to bore down into our part. And then we're going to make these long arcing loops to open this guy up. And then from there, we're also doing our little step down as well. So this is a good way to rough out this pocket. And this is with the 2D path. Very simple to pick our bottoms of our floors and go. Now, if I wanted to do this with a 3D tool path, I fully could do that as well. So if I go 3D adaptive clearing, the big difference is, is we're not actually going to pick floors in this case. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select edges. And what you're going to see me do is I'm going to pick that very top edge of our profile. I am, however, going to turn off rest machining for this demonstration because we do not want that actual tool to be conflicted by our other paths. So let's go ahead and go to our passes tab. Again, same optimal load for this tool. We can now actually set a maximum rough step down and a minimum rough step down. So again, if you're doing like a taper or a 3D part, you may want that. The cool thing about this is we're automatically going to recognize the flat area over here on the right as we're machining. So let's go ahead and hit OK, and let's see what kind of results we get. 
Again, we're going to get that board down, and this is going to be something that is actually beneficial if you were in a time situation. Notice how we're roughing down and then we're doing the whole pocket in one shot, where if we look a little bit more at this 2D adaptive clearing, we're actually going to rough down all the way to the bottom, cutting this pocket, then come back and do this pocket. So that's why sometimes one way is faster, some other times different ways are slower based off what you're doing. But again, if you guys wanted to use 3D pocket clearing, same concept, you're just gonna pick that upper chain as your boundary. Again, in 3D, we give it a boundary. In 2D, we give it like a profile to work with. So now that we've roughed that out, let's go back and finish out that pocket. I'm gonna go back to 2D contour. I may actually pick that profile here. Again, I wanna do this with step downs. So let's go ahead and say multiple depths. I'm gonna go quarter inch step downs. And again, this is where some different things are gonna happen. So in some ways, we are wasting a little bit of time coming across this backside of the part because of that open pocket kind of scenario. So if we actually go in here and I add that second area, so again, is we're gonna grab that edge. And now what you're noticing is I'm not using the floor, I'm actually using the edge of my pocket, is we now have an open and a closed pocket all in one session. Again, we're still wasting that time machining across there. The nice thing with 2D, however, is we are getting the ability to turn on things like wear, and you're able to use the cutter comp at your controller to adjust this pocket as needed. Again, if we want to do the same thing, we could go 3D, you could do 3D contour, kind of like before, we're going to give it a selected boundary around our part. In this case, we're going to go into our passes tab. We do have a maximum step down. So if we say 0.25, and just like that, you're now seeing that we're cutting around, we're saving a little bit of time by not having to jump across that part. Neither one of these ways is right or wrong. We are actually getting some interference down here at the bottom of this part too. So I may need to adjust that in 2D contour or in 3D contour because it is model aware. And instead of going to model bottom, we're just gonna say go to pocket bottom. So again, I'm gonna leave this up to you guys to which way you think is the better way to machine out this pocket. Every scenario is different. Every way is different. Anybody and everybody can do it. So here we can now move over and now that we've roughed and kind of finished out that pocket we do have that ability to now come in and cut our next smaller pocket so we are going to need a smaller tool for this unless your tool can fit in there and again i am using a quarter inch tool so i could actually squeeze that quarter inch tool down there so i may come in and approach this as a simple 2d contour i'm going to go to my heights tab and i'm actually going to say my top height is from a selected location so we've already machined down to the bottom of our pocket. And then based on that information, I'm actually gonna ramp into this guy. So this is kind of a neat trick where you don't have to rough out and finish, but you can see how I can go down and I can ramp into that part and I could actually clean out that profile as needed, punching all the way through. Again, a big thing for all of you is, is you're always gonna wanna go past a little bit if we're doing something through. So I'm gonna go through and say there's a negative offset of 50. And now if we look at this a little more from the side, you'll see how we've actually broke through the bottom of that pocket. So that kind of wraps up the ability to actually cut out that pocket with the exception of creating our chamfers. So let's go ahead and do our chamfer now. So we're gonna go ahead and say 2D contour. We're actually not gonna say chamfer. And the reason for that is, is the best way to think about this is this is more of an edge break than it is a chamfer. We have a modeled chamfer here. So by using 2D contour and picking up a spot drill, so I'm gonna go to my shop crib and we're gonna go ahead and grab that 3.8 spot drill. I do have a speed and feed for this tool for actually cleaning up edges. And then from there, if we pick the geometry at the lower edge, you're gonna notice when we gave it a spot drill, we're gonna get what's called a chamfer option turned on. We are gonna to wanna to offset that tip just a hair just to get down and away from the walls. But just like that, we could go through and break that edge all around the top edge of our part. Now, that we've done our pocket from this view, let's go ahead and now spot drill our through holes from the side, and then we could drill those out. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to create a whole separate setup, right? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go to my setups. I'm gonna now say I wanna select my Z and my X. We're gonna go ahead and pick our Z. My X axis can run down my part, so I'm just picking an edge here. We're gonna actually set our box point. I'm gonna go ahead and go to this back left corner as if there is a hole there that you could pick up on. And then we're gonna use from preceding stock. And the reason for this is with the combination of continuous rest machining, you're gonna notice that pocket's already in my stock model. 
not that it's a big deal. So now for the actual drilling of these side holes, we're gonna start by spot drilling them. So I'm gonna go to drill. I'm actually gonna pick the chamfer here. So it's really neat in Fusion's world with that spot drill and picking the chamfer, it's automatically setting my depths and already doing all of the calculations to give me that nice chamfer on the top as well as my spot drill. I do need to, however, switch from that finishing to my drilling actual operation just to make that tool not blow up in the machine. But now that we have those spot drilled, I can go through and drill them. So I'm not gonna drill all these holes for you guys, but I'm gonna drill one and kind of show you a neat way around this. So by going in and saying, I wanna drill a hole, we're gonna go ahead and pick our tool and we're just gonna grab a, for example, quarter inch drill bit here. So let me skim through my profile real quick to a quarter inch drill bit. And there we go. Again, we'll say aluminum drilling. Now my geometry tab is where I need to pick my hole faces for being able to go in and drill this. So by putting my mouse on here and picking that first hole, you're gonna notice that we go down so far and then we stop. Now I need this to go all the way through. So I'm gonna pick that lower profile as well. And what you're seeing is Fusion's now calculating from a hole top to a whole bottom. However, we just need to break through this a certain amount, right? So in our heights tab where we control our Z axis of our toolpath, we're gonna say drill tip through bottom. And then I like to just go ahead and bump it through again, 20 to 50, depending on what you like. And just like that, we're now drilling all the way down through our part. Now, if we were to go over here and pick a second hole, what you're gonna notice is without that upper hole selection, it's gonna try to wrap it down. So you guys gotta be cautious of this because we don't wanna wrap it down and crash or cause any problems. We wanna make sure that we pick both of those actual cylinders to make sure that drilling cycle goes all the way around. Now, I know some of you guys are gonna have some questions like, can we break through, then speed up, and then go down to the lower section? You can't in this cycle. However, you could program this two times through, and I'll show you how. So if I go back now, is we're gonna go ahead and leave that first drilling cycle. I'm gonna create a new drilling cycle, and this is gonna do my top holes. Again, you guys will say, you know, drill tip through bottom, 0.05. But now I'm going to do my drilling profile again. And now this time through, I'm gonna select again down here at the bottom, drill tip through bottom, and we'll give it 50. So what's gonna happen is, is it's not gonna go through the first hole and then wrap it down and go through the second hole, but we could drill the upper holes before drilling the lower holes, allowing us to now wrap it down to that plane the second time through. I know it's not the best of solution, guys, but it is very helpful to speed up that process by doing so. Again, this gap here isn't too detrimental, especially considering this part is aluminum, and we can run through that very, very quickly. So, as always, guys, that kind of concludes this video for Milling Monday. I do want to say, once again, if you guys are loving this content, go ahead and like and subscribe. Come check out our website. Go ahead and sign up for free support through us and start putting in your tickets. And as always, have a great rest of your day.